praise his name oh father we praise you lord god almighty tonight blessed be the name of the lord oh lord we praise you we thank you for your mercy lord god and for your grace for your wonderful spirit that we feel in here the anointing is in the house of the lord tonight oh praise his name thank you thank you jesus blessed be the name of the lord oh hallelujah praise god thank you jesus lord god we praise you tonight we thank you for your presence we thank you to be here lord oh hallelujah father we feel that tonight that anything can happen what cause greater is he that is in us than he does in the world thank you Jesus praise God thank you Lord praise God are you enjoying the prayer meetings amen well praise God so we had a wonderful prayer meeting Wednesday night and a few little comments. So we're looking to the Lord for tonight. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles to St. Mark 11, St. John 21, and 2 Peter. Amen. The presence of the Lord is surely in this place. Oh, when the season is right and the people are ready, can't tell what's going to happen. Don't know. Praise God. St. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. <clears throat> For well, verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall relieve that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have any ought against, if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And St. John 21, finishing up tonight on this little uh, time of the Lord appearing to his disciples. We've been having a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. Since then came Jesus. So we want to finish up tonight. The, uh, verse 20. Then Peter turning about, seeing the disciple. Now he had, Jesus had just commissioned him, Peter. Now he's with the Lord. Seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast and sup and said, Lord, which is that... Uh, which is he that portrayeth thee? 
Peter seeing him saith to Jesus Lord and what shall this man do Jesus said unto him if I will that he tarry till he come till I come what is that to thee follow thou me Amen. then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die yet Jesus said not unto him he shall not die but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. The which if they should be written every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. 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 Glory. Second Peter 1 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby given to us exceeding great and precious promises that Brother Robledo preached on. It was as a mountain laying before Caleb. See, it's a mountain of promises. Amen. And laying uh, there, and uh, that you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption as in the world through lust. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. May God have a blessing to read of his word, just a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we met you when we came in the house of the Lord tonight. You were certainly here and are certainly here in a mighty way. Lord God, now may you fill me with the Holy Ghost for service. Amen. Lord God, that I might preach the word of God tonight. And may you fill the believers. Amen. And while I yet speak these words, may the Holy Ghost fall upon some that have need of the Holy, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And Lord, may some of the healings be made manifest tonight. Amen. Like Stephanie Colenbrenner's was. Oh, praise God. Now, Heavenly Father, remove me out of the way and get glory for thy holy child, Jesus, by stretching forth thy hand tonight. Praise God to do signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bring the deliver the captives, Father. Amen. Open the blinded eyes. Praise God. May signs and wonders follow the message. And most of all, may every person's soul be set free in here tonight and set them on fire. Praise God for the will of God in their lives. Bless the reading of the word. Bless the hearing of the word. And bless the preaching of the word. And confirm the word. In Jesus' name we pray and ask the blessing. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Amen. Well, praise God. What can we say? Feel like old church now. Like it used to be. Amen. So maybe we're getting back to that spot. Amen. And Brother Norman, and the title is, And to Godliness, Brotherly Kindness. My subject is forgiveness. And just recapping Wednesday night, those of you who were here, follow me was the message. And the Holy Spirit kind of struck uh, on the young people. And I kept saying rock groups. I, I wasn't meaning that. I was meaning just Christian rock groups. That's what I was trying to get at. Amy, Brian, whoever they are, Amy, somebody, and uh, Mariah, and all these different people, and all these ungodly, worldly, uh, so-called Christian singing, group singing, Amen. Christian songs. So if you have discernment, you would discern right away what kind of spirit is on the tape and what kind of spirit is singing with no life. And you wouldn't even want it in your car. You wouldn't even want it in your home. You wouldn't even want to touch it, realizing that they put them records in a circle and a demon demonizes them and say, go and sell. And then you scoop it up, praise God, having no discernment of the Holy Ghost. Well, we don't want that in this church. 
We don't want no drum beating and contemporary and whatever it is. Amen. So it's finished. And you parents getting out of your house. Amen. That's what I was speaking about Wednesday night. You may be seated. Amen. Now there's three conditions for perfect faith. Number one, a spirit of forgiveness. Number two, a revelation that God is the word and the word is God. And number three, um, you must be able to identify yourself in the word. So you know, since you're hanging around here all these years and can't find yourself in the scriptures for today. And you can point to the Bible and say, I'm a written epistle for this day. Amen. Are we just a church member? Amen. So now uh, our faith is based on forgiveness. Amen. And then reading and so we just have no old fashioned time like we had Wednesday. Amen. Everybody's open. Praise God. Anything can happen tonight. Amen. Praise God and on perfect faith page four. And I just speaking about I just read the scripture to you. I want to back up here again on verse 25 and 26. And, uh, and when you stand praying after having this faith to speak to the mountain, then you stand up and pray. Uh, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have uh, uh, ought against any, that your Father also, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now this is a very, I don't know, this, I've been saying it over and over and over. And it don't get into the people's hearts. They, you will get nothing if you don't forgive. Because this is your age. And I don't care if it takes the skin off here. Praise God. You have to forgive. Because you have come to that time. You have lived out the shuck age. Where you didn't say anything, do anything, and God bless you. Now we in the Word now. Way up in the Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may forgive. You may be seated. Amen. So therefore, your Father cannot forgive you. Amen. And therefore, when you stand praying, you can't do it. Amen. Now, faith is based on forgiveness. This is the prophet's words. Now how can you have seven thunder faith if you cannot forgive? Then how can you be in the seven thunder inspiration and don't forgive and hold grudges and arts and all kind of things in the seven thunders? The prophet of God himself said, now faith is based on forgiveness. When you come to the Lord asking for healing and asking for that, the first thing he does is examine you to see if you got any arts in your heart against anybody. Then your healing is blocked. Then you're asking for the Holy Ghost is blocked. Because the Bible says that the Lord will, will perhaps love to want to do it for you, but he can't go against his word. He done spoke it, and so shall it be. And the prophet has Put it out here today as the day's message. If there wouldn't be no prophet to make it seed word for today, then it'd just be in the scripture. But now it's living, moving, jumping. Praise God on tape and book. And you can't get away. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe see there. Now faith is based on forgiveness. And then as we said this morning, trying to get the church into the place to where we could really see apostolic times moving among us. That's what we all hunger. And it's just laying right at the door. We see it, but we want to see more of it. We want, we, we want it such a flow that it'll be a help to us and flow out to others. Remember, remember Wednesday night? It's not for you, it's for others. God didn't raise you up for yourself. He raised you up to use you for others. Amen. And we're speaking about coming to the cross. You come to the cross. You're born again, new birth. And there you sit, the blood dripping down over you. 
identifying yourself with Jesus Christ then you're filled with the Holy Ghost you go up on the cross and hang on the cross and there you begin to be identified like him and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness and then when you can die out with that sixth virtue godliness then it's time for you to step off the cross you're number seven now praise God and now you're gonna pick up the cross and put it on your back and put your footprints in the blood of Jesus Christ that's the message oh hallelujah praise God you may be seated amen so we see now faith is based on forgiveness so there is your spirit of forgiveness being your very foundation to begin to have perfect faith and seven thunders gives perfect faith amen and number two revelation that God is the word and the word is God amen and on page 11, speaking on perfect faith here, paragraph 63, Brother Brown saying here, I don't know the mechanics of the Holy Ghost. I, don't, I, I know it fell on me. I can't tell the mechanics of it. And 25 years, people expecting you to explain perfection, explain the prophet, explain this here. Anything that you can explain is no more faith. So I'm preaching faith. So I cannot explain faith. If the prophet said, get rid of your TV, I cannot explain TV. I cannot explain about the tuner that's in the VCR. And I'm not going to explain the mechanics of it. Prophet said, get it out. So why come to the minister to explain that? Explain what? Do what he said. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. Amen. See why, why you don't get nothing? You want ex explanation. People want to explain after you got the books and tapes. Explain me. Explain what? You, you speak it. And a revelation takes place. And you do it yourself. Then you're not following Brother Coleman. You're following the message. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. So there we are. I don't care about it. I don't care about the mechanics. I, I, I care to, to know about is the blessings of the Holy Ghost. The mechanics, he works that. That's his secret. Amen. This boy could not be healed. That was the boy in St. Matthew 17 when they came off the mountain. The, the nine disciples was down there and the other three were up on the mountain. The disciples had power. Jesus had Gave them power to heal all manner of sickness and cast out devils and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead. He gave them power, but they didn't have faith to operate the power that they had. Why didn't they have faith? Well, they hadn't received the Holy Ghost yet. The Holy Ghost is the one that gives the faith. But they had the word, the power without the Holy Ghost. And there's people in the message today for 25 years that have the power, but no faith to operate the power. They need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to operate that. Yes, sir. And then they went up on the, uh, up on the, up in the upper room and there they received faith to ignite the power that he had already given them. Amen. So they didn't have faith to operate the power that they had. And then they questioned Jesus and said, now, uh, why couldn't we do it? Now remember, well, well, why do they have to do this? And, why, and this and that. See, without the Holy Ghost, they questioned now remember, they had the word, and the word was fleshed in, and the word told them, I give you power. You have the word now, and the word tells you, I give you power. You have the word direct from the prophet's mouth for this season. That's God speaking through the prophet. No questions. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. They had the word, and the word was fleshed in. And the word told them, I give you power. Amen, I give you power. And they had the power, but they didn't have faith to operate the word that was in them. Amen. What I mean, see what I mean? Jesus had it. He was the word. And he had faith 
that what he said would happen, he said, oh, bring him here. How long will I suffer you? Yes, sir. How long do I have to do this here? See, he had faith with his power. How did he? He said, I can do nothing in myself. Why? He relied on, upon what he was. Now, can you rely on what you're supposed to be? Now, there's a reason why you cannot. Amen. He, amen. He relied on what he was. He relied in knowing that he was the word. And he had faith in God who made him the word. Revelation that God is the word and the word is God. Number two. Amen. He's shown you the way. He was God the word. And they was in him. And that give him faith because, watch, he understood his position. He knew who he was. He knew what he come here for. And knew nothing could stop it. Praise God. But what about you? What are you here for? Nothing can stop you for the purpose. All the trials and circumstances and in the natural cannot stop something spiritual. Praise God that's going to happen that God done spoke it before the foundation of the world. Praise God is going to happen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. You may be seated. They give him faith. He understood his position. He knows who, who he is. And maybe if God would speak to you, a uh, 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 Jacob, Grace, Joseph, affection, you'll know who you are. It won't matter be 1964. Ain't nobody going to stop it. Ain't no woman, no man, no minister, nobody. Sickness, disease, nothing. Praise God you're standing your lot on June 7, 1991. Preaching the same thing. Praise God with the same power. Hallelujah. Praise God. Who's going to stop him? Let him come forth. Praise God. Can't nobody stop it. With the nonsensical nonsense, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So be it. You may be seated. He understood his position. He knowed what he was because the scripture has said he was this. And here every scripture tied in to prove that he was exactly what the scripture said he would be. And he knew what he was. Oh, hallelujah. If the church could only know who they are. But they're pillar patting around with all nonsense and down depression and what they don't know who they are. They don't have the faith to know who they are. Therefore, he, re he relied upon what God had made him. When you fall into these things, you rely. I am the bride. Get back, Satan, praise God. I am manifested for this day to destroy the works of the devil. To tear down the kingdom of Satan. To rip out his music and all the traps he set for the young people praise God to rip them things out of there hallelujah praise God amen you may be seated and if he did that then why can't we rely on what God made us as believers these signs shall follow them that believe he had faith in what he was and if you are a believer you have faith in what you are I am Joseph Perfection. I don't know what you are, but that's what I am. Because he told me so, praise God. Then I'm relying on it. I'm preaching on it. I'm trying to live like it. Because that's what I am. Hallelujah, praise God. You better begin to act like it. That's what it is for this day. That's the word for this day. Yes, sir. Give me my mountain, praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. If you are a believer, you have faith in what you are. You are a believer. And if you got faith in God, the Bible says over here, if our hearts condemn us, then we, uh, then we can't have faith. And that's the problem. But if our hearts don't condemn us, then we have faith. 
we have confidence towards God. If you want to read that, St. John 3, 21, got the scripture. If our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. We don't feel like this and hiding and whatnot. We come boldly to the throne of grace, past the ribbon veil, praise God, knowing that he died for us, knowing that we make mistakes, but knowing that the blood will be there, praise God. That's faith. Yes, sir. Not wishy-washy, make one mistake and fall to pieces. Don't come to church, backslide. Go winding around somewhere, praise God. What kind of Christian is that? You make a mistake, repent. And come back to God. Come back to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated, praise God. Amen. But as long as you're doing things that's wrong, it, there you are. You can't have confidence towards God. If I'm preaching one thing in a pulpit and, and reading scriptures and quotes and things and you're doing something contrary, well, you come sneaking in here then. You ain't got no faith. You have, because you, 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 you don't have no confidence. Well, then why are you doing these things? Don't you know who you are? You're not supposed to be doing those things. You're supposed to die to it. Glory to God. So you can see, you'll automatically know that you're wrong. You automatically put yourself back there a sinner by knowing that you're wrong. But when your heart don't condemn you, and you know you are a believer, and there's nothing between you and God. Nothing between you and God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, sir nothing between you and God you can ask what you will and know that it'll be given because it's the word that's given to you just like it was to those disciples and the only thing you have to do then is have faith in what you are have faith in what the word says you are and Jesus had faith in the word of God that he uh, what he was is written of me I am that I am Amen. And he knew that with, with that perfect faith. See, perfect faith is the Holy Spirit. And there he had the, whole, the fullness of it, which was perfect. That he was the anointed Messiah. He had so, such, so much faith he could pick up any scripture that pertained to him and make it manifest, make it come to pass. Yes, sir. He, he was anointed, maybe seated. Knowing the Messiah, that the Spirit of God was upon him, he said, now I, I and myself do nothing, but it's my faith in God. And God was in him. And then here we are in ourselves mechanics. And we're waiting in here now. And, then, and the Spirit of God is beginning to move in here now. Amen. That's the Spirit of God that will come upon you. Praise God. And then you'll feel that like Samson. Once more, Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Amen. Now in myself I do nothing, but it's my faith in God. In your faith in the anointing. Amen. The Pentecostals had faith in the anointing. Speaking in tongues and so forth. They could go right into that thing. Amen. And prophesying. And Wesleyan, they had faith in the anointing. And so did Luther. They had faith in the anointing. What about our day? Faith in our anointing. Dynamics of your mechanics. But it's my faith in God. And God was in him. The word made manifest. And when the word of God comes in you, it's made manifest. Now watch. As you are a believer. See? And a believer, watch, is the faith of God that moves in you. Now the word is a believer. And that is the faith that moves through you. Do you get it? 1964, the word came into me as Joseph Perfection. And that's what moved me. That's what kept me all these years. That was the faith. Then comes seven thunders. That moved me. Amen. That's why I don't care about what anybody says. But I'll plow into that thing and knock it down. 
Hallelujah. You may be seated. Did you get it? The believer for this day, the believer is the faith of God. You got it? That's the, okay then, praise God. So now a believer is the faith of God that moves in you. You must, now number three, you must be able to identify yourself in the word. Find your position, Luther, Wesley, Pentecostals, and now the word bride. If you are the word bride, then you better start taking the word. Like dropping the arts, forgiveness, and these kind of, that's the word. If you don't do it, then how can you be the word bride? You're back in Pentecost somewhere. Simple as that. That's the word. Amen. Praise. Don't have no fear in here tonight. <laughs> There's some here that are kind of living a little bit low and they're sitting there kind of sad. Just repent in the seat and fire will strike you. And you will become a believer. A believer believer. Not a make believer. Amen. You may be seated. Page 13. Now the identification of a scripture Christian. These words said Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe. Now how can you call yourself a believer of people and deny those words? How can you call yourself a believer and deny any of this word? See, you can't do it. You're not a believer. Therefore signs can't follow you. Because you just accept what you want to believe and let the, and let the rest of it go. You, uh, you don't believe it. But you got to take the whole thing and believe it. And when you truly believe, not make believe, but really believe, then these signs shall follow them that believe. And we're on the verge of it right now. These last two meetings, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's moving in slow. Then came Jesus. Hallelujah. Ruth. Amen. Praise God. To know him from the beginning. Amen. The trumpet of the jubilee, praise God. Come and dine. Hallelujah, praise God. He that is in you. Oh, love is thou me. It's moving up, moving up, moving up. Oh, now therefore give me my mountain. Hallelujah, praise God. Follow me. Amen. See, it's moving up. Maybe seated. Amen. Oh, could you compare a Christian today with them Christians of long ago? How them disciples walked in the power of the Spirit, moved by the Holy Ghost, do it. Just a prisoner, as I preached the other night, a prisoner to the Word and will of God. He couldn't even move until God moved him. Wouldn't you like to see a church rise like that? Amen. It's going, it's going to, going back. It's got to come. That's right. It's on the road now. It's on the road. We're traveling on the right road. Hallelujah. Abide in me and my words abide in you. Shall ask what you will. Yes, sir. G uh, page 16. Jesus had perfect faith. He had it and it come because he was the word. Now I'm going to show you when we add from faith all the way to brotherly kindness, we become the word. We become the word. That's what I'm doing. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus was the word. And that's, what, that's the word for this day. And when we add these virtues, we, we, come, we have seven of them. Praise God. Then, then charity comes upon it. My God. Then if you say to this mountain, see, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. This word abides in you. Then ask what you will, it'll be done for you. If you say to the mountain, be moving, don't doubt, but believe what you said, then you shall have what you ask. A ask for, you shall have it. It'll be given in you time, space, nothing else will ever change it. It's got to happen. It's been spoken. Yes, amen. Glory. Nothing else will ever change it. You know it's done. It's already, it's already over with. Now watch. Now. He said, if you abide in me and my word in you, uh, St. John, you can ask what you will, it'll be done. Then recognize your position in the scripture as a believer. See, 
you got to recognize your position as he recognized his position. So there we are. So we see St. John 15 here. You buy me my words, abide in you. Then recognize your position in the scripture as a believer. See, you got to recognize your position as he recognized his position for perfect faith. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. When you do this, then you are ready for the fire of charity to fall on you for the third phase to begin in the prime. Amen. Now, right in the very hour of no brotherly love in the message, there will come forth a bride with the seventh age requirement added to her godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Notice, let's strike this seventh thunder. Amen. Now, the bride receives a revelation of honey. Amen. She receives it. Just a, two or three quotes here, just to nail it down for you. Praise God. Amen. Blasphemous names, page 15. Now, Peter said, first, faith. Now, watch it real close now. We're going to teach this for a few minutes. Faith now is your first. And add to your faith, virtue, to your virtue, knowledge, to your knowledge, temperance, to your temperance. Why do I keep saying this? Huh? Because you don't know it yet. You think you heard this before. You heard it with your ear. You didn't hear it in the heart. Because if you did, this place would be on fire. Charity would be all over this place. So therefore, I'm here to remind you of the things the prophet said. I just picked up spirits. I heard it before. You didn't hear that before because you're still in your same condition. If you had heard it, you, you would have acted upon it. Hallelujah. You said, give me that book. Hallelujah. And fire would have come into you. Praise God. So now you sit down and you hear it again. Amen. I'm commissioned to pour the virtues into you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Faith is your first. Add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge temperance, to your temperance patience. How many times did you hear Brother Brown speak on uh, Abraham in the tent? How many books? Well, how many times will you hear me speak on the seven virtues? That's my message. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To your knowledge, temperance. To your temperance, patience. To your patience, godliness. To your godliness, brotherly love. Brotherly kindness. And then love. And anyone knows that love is God and God is love. Yes, sir. Page 16. Now, these things I just spoke about. Now, watch. Here's why I know you don't know it. And these things here absolutely, absolutely must be in the Christian before the Holy Ghost ever seals them. That's why I know you don't know it. Because you would have been sealed with charity a long time ago if you knew it, understood it. So you pray for it, Lord. Therefore, give me my mountain. Lord, add to my faith, virtue, and knowledge, and temperance, and so forth. That's your prayer. Praise God. You got it now? That's what I'm doing. To get these things in you so charity can come upon you. Amen. Glory. You see it now? Now, these things must absolutely be in the Christian before the Holy Ghost ever seals them, before this comes down, down on top and makes a complete unit. Page 19, praise God. Now the honey in Sister Shepherd's dream uh, represented brotherly love, brotherly kindness, which is this age. I just got through telling you, see, a brotherly kindness, the age that we live in now. That's where we're living right now. Brotherly love, brotherly kindness, forgiveness, and all these things here. Amen. The rock box confession of honey. And that's when the, and the, the workman takes this big bucket of water and dumps it into your rock box. All kind of trash and everything comes boiling out of there. Now that is your confession. That you love the Lord. And you're a Christian. But yet the Holy Spirit brings out trash and all kind of gook and everything else out of your rock box confession. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
and then he dumps in the honey and the honey looks like it's not gonna stick but it sticks so maybe it'll stick tonight and you'll say I'm sorry forgive me I have nothing against you oh that's when it sticks amen the honey represented brotherly love which is this age amen I just got through telling you brotherly kindness the age oh go to that mighty angel in Revelation 10 8 through 11 say give me this little book that I might be identified in the seventh age forgiving my brother no arts and dropping them all there's your forgiveness amen remember the secret laid in the seventh step where the prophet's pyramid message the statue of a perfect man brings you into charity the presence of the king oh hallelujah praise god amen page 23 statue of a perfect man now you know about beating out the gold you keep beating the gold until you see a reflection of yourself in the natural page 23 that's the way god does he takes the gold that he has found in the earth and he beats it by the holy spirit turn it over and over and over and beat it until he can see his reflection and that's what we're supposed to do reflect the son of god and now we're supposed to do his work saint john 14 12. you're beginning to reflect the works of god but so many of us try to do the works of christ before the reflection of christ is in us now there's the trouble we find these things happening you know it <clears throat> i know it we see these stumbles along the road we find the scrap heaps of ministers of christians piled along the road it is because they didn't go into it right last 25 years all piled up along the road amen praise god can you imagine because they didn't go into it right amen but i'm making sure here you're going to go into it right amen and the way you go into it amen is 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 to add these christian virtues faith to godliness then take that mighty giant seven step because i preach wednesday on that sixth step which is the, the number of man and you can't go no further than that because seven is god's dimension you can't even go into god's dimension now amen because now number six like i was saying or you could have temperance amen you can have a little knowledge and have a little temperance and don't get in that, don't do things to people and mind your business and keep your hands to yourself a little temperance amen have a little patience and, and don't get upset because somebody talk against you but but what about godliness to be like jesus that's number six that kills that man death to self number six amen you gotta die you can't even get the brotherly kindness and brotherly kindness is only a manifestation of the father's goodness and kindness to the world and he comes into you and goes through the world walking in you and loving and forgiving and dropping arts and things that ain't you that's god amen so praise god <clears throat> page 45 now remember the blackbird with peacock feathers uh don't forget see don't try to add it until you're actually born again because it won't work you can't make it work it'll come to this or this it'll crumble somewhere and when you get down here to the genuine born again dub then you don't add nothing it adds to you comes on up amen all right coming into perfection now all right then sixthly add uh brotherly love brotherly kindness that's a good one right here is a sixth one seven all right adding brotherly kindness all right when we get to that brotherly kindness put yourself in his place on the matter now you say my brother sinned against me said peter shall i forgive him he said seven times a day he said 70 times seven see brotherly kindness see you see what it's about here brotherly kindness all about forgiveness and christ is the one who forgives that's how you know whether the person got christ in them they don't hold grudges in things they don't say speak mean to me or he busted me <laughs> so that person ain't got christ that's their flesh that's hurt and they want to pound the flesh yes sir amen i have discernment i know what they what they're looking for praise god oh my 
Huh? Kind of opening up, huh? Praise God. They get mad. Yes, sir. They get mad at me and look at me strange when I stand back there. I'd look right at them. <laughs> I'd listen, woman or oh man. I preach a word to you. Go on about your business. <laughs> Praise God. Go on down the stairs mad and evil. Go on out. Stand outside there. I, I, I come to the door. I look out there. And wave. Amen. They're still looking at me. Does, does he know what he said? I know what I said. Amen. He told me to say it. Amen. Pray. I know exactly what I said. I meant to say it. To free you. Praise God. Glory. Amen. Okay. Put yourself in the matter. My brother sinned against me. He said, Peter, shall I forgive him? Seven times a day. He said, 70 times seven. See, brotherly kindness. Now, you see, if a brother is all out of tune, don't be impatient with him. No, be kind to him. Go anyhow. See? Now, uh, uh, you know, no black uh, bird feathers with peacock uh, feathers. Amen. Be born again first. Faith. With brotherly kindness, then you can go to the Lord's sheep. Now watch, in the message now, with all the interpretations. It's out there, said every kind of thing you want to say against the thunders and against everything else. And then God turns around and sends you out to them. And you really got to have the goods. Because you have tapes where they spoke against you, you know exactly what they said. And here you come walking like Jesus. A written epistle. Oh, a thundering life <laughs> glory to God amen so all that God let them sit in the interpretations for a ministry for the bride to go free them and, and, and help them to bring it up to date now he says here's brotherly kindness somebody said not that long ago how can you believe these things the way you do and still go to the assemblies of God, you know, uh, uh, Jesus' name and so forth, you know, and go to, to three God people. And the oneness and all the rest of the, of the places, brotherly kindness, hoping someday. Patience with him, temperance, enduring with him, knowledge to understand what he believes. In other words, what spirit is moving in him. God bless you, brother. Hey, you can see uh, some kind of a strange spirit. And you look at him. Well, how are you, brother? And he's looking at you. And you just, how are you? God bless you. Now, he's saying, I, don't you know that I talked about you? And I'm saying back, you know, I, sure I do. But I love you. I forgive you for saying it. Amen. See, that, that's what goes on in the spirit world, you know. Then you overpower that spirit. That spirit goes with confused. I said, come here, brother. Give me a hug. Praise God. Praise, I'm your brother. Amen. I'm not the Pope. What's, what's wrong with you? Amen. Praise God. And these are your sisters in here. Don't forget that. Amen. You may be seated. Patience with them, temperance. See why these things got to be in you? How in the world can God send you anywhere? Amen. Enduring with him, knowledge to understand what he believes. And remember, it's in his heart. That's what it is. Only God can take it out of there virtue in you but you got virtue power to let it go out with kindness not getting mad and want to blast somebody you know meekness to him having faith that someday God will bring him in brotherly kindness the seventh thing one two three four five six seven things then now you're coming next thing then add charity which is love that's the capping stone and one of these days in the church I'll leave it right there Praise God. Amen. Now you're coming. That's the capping stone. Adoption time to find your position. Know your position. Amen. On adoption time, praise God. Page 57. Ephraim, Ephraim don't want to stay. One of them want to go over here. We find Manasseh just over there. And I'm reading this for, uh, for, because for a reason in, in my climax here now. Oh, my lords, give you a good cornfield. Then here comes over here, Gad. Now, wait a minute. I'm supposed to raise oats, but I'm going to get, get corn too. Hallelujah. See, you ain't got nothing to do with corn. Get oats. Oats is your part to raise. That's your position. See? Amen. You, and you ain't supposed to herd sheep when you're supposed to herd cattle. 
God wants to place a church, but every one of them wants to do the same thing. Hallelujah. And you can't tell them a thing about it. No, no. They still got that goatee nature, but, but, but. So you see? You see, you can't tell them. That's right. Now, isn't that, isn't that true? And you can't place the church, see? The church is supposed to be predestinated unto the adoption of children where a man, God can take a man and adopt him to the family and give him something. That first, try that and see if it's right. 25 years. Amen. And then, and then try it and see if it's right. If it's all right, move with it. Did you move with it? Because you, you know it's right. You move with it. Amen. Then say, Lord, send us something else. That's tonight. That's what you're praying for. Give me my mountain, Lord. I'll move with these thunders, praise God, and everything else. Now I want my mountain. That's the way you feel? Amen. Yes, amen. Glory. Give me my mountain, praise God. Amen. All right. Say, Lord, send us something else. Keep moving. Amen. And just keep moving until every fellow takes his place. Then you're going to see the church of God begin to get to his place. Then then's when the Philistines will go to backing up. The shorts will go off. The hair will grow down. Faces will be washed. Cigars will be missing. That's right. When the church begins to get into his mighty power, when they have Ananias and Sapphira and a few of them. Yes, sir, you see, when that holy, holy church stands together in his power, positionally placed as sons of God, adopted into the family of God, powerful church standing in his glory oh that's what he's coming for oh my that's what he's coming for church yes sir amen now st john if you want to open your bible up st john 21 i want to strike it here now and get ready to, to close out here shortly amen praise god i want to i got took me 17 years to come back around to this here i want to finish it amen Verse 20, then Peter turning about, see it, the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? In other words, Ephraim said, Lord, what shall Manasseh do? Huh? Praise God. So now, Peter had the instructions from Jesus in verse 18 and 19, follow me. Now Peter felt great. He felt good. He had heard from God. He's walking with Jesus. He's number number one. Amen. And now he wanted. Now he wants to know. I know what I'm doing. Now and here come this man John. Now Lord, what's he supposed to do? Because you and I together, Lord. You know. And wh what does he want? Yes, sir. Uh, why is he following us? Amen. See, now he wanted to know what was John supposed to do, and then. Peter knows John following without, uh, without the same invitation that he had. Jesus had told Peter, follow me. He didn't tell John to follow him. John just tagged along. Amen, see? So Peter said, what shall this man do? 22nd verse, uh, Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So Jesus rebuked rebuked his curiosity by stating that if it was his will that he lived to his second coming that was none of Peter's concern and what I'm doing and what the, the prophet ordained me to do is none of these ministers concern I'm in my church I'm in my place I'm ordained to be here it's no woman's concern and she ain't got nothing to say about it and I, that's why I don't even listen to them praise God I don't care what they say amen because it's none of their concern. Hallelujah. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Praise God. You may be seated. It was enough for him to be concerned about doing God's will in his own life. Let alone uh, uh, worrying about what is John supposed to be doing. And Jesus said, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Jesus' words, however, were readily misconstrued as an assurance that John would live on until the Lord's return. The if, he said, what if, was easily forgotten. John himself corrects this false impression in verse 23. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that the disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said, not unto him he shall not die, but 
if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? And that's where all the trouble in the message is at. They misconstrued what the prophet said. And they come up with all kind of crazy things. Praise God. I wonder if the same thing has happened in this age. Amen. Even in the churches, people say things and misconstrue it and get mad and almost shake somebody's hand all like this here. It wasn't even spoken that way. See? Saying or going abroad about many things in the message. 1967, there was a binding spirit coming in the message to stop the ministers from preaching and forming a denomination in the message. And I, I was getting a haircut one day over in the Bronx there in Manhattan somewhere. And I knew that certain spirit I had to face the people Sunday, 1967. And I was thinking about it in my heart. And the Holy Spirit thundered down into my car. Said, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. And that binding spirit broke by the word. So I ain't worried no more about what they're talking about. Amen. He said, follow thou me. And I had tried to follow him right on up to the night, June 7, 1991. In spite of all the things that they have to say, in spite of all what's been said about, wh about what I preach in my church and my conventions and so forth, still what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Hallelujah. Praise God. You never get to heaven worrying about what they're saying. I tell you that. But you will get there if you do what Jesus tell you to do. That's right. And drop your amen. Follow thou me and drop your arts and forgive them. And follow thou me to the seventh step. And I'll meet you there. I know because I met him on the seventh step in June 9th. And I want to meet him there again. Hallelujah. Oh, it was wonderful when I met him there. We must take this seventh step. We cannot flinch back. The hour has come to take this step. And that's why I'm in this public tonight. Till you have got to take it, praise God. Amen. Page 16, the sign of this time, New York City. Amen. Pa paragraph 114, uh, uh, under Luther, the same Holy Spirit, justification, sanctification under Wesley, the message, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, making three, three, not three steps of grace, but three stations, I might call it. He drops down to paragraph 117. Now, this last great step must come into the perfection which I preached on Wednesday night that the Holy Spirit has to live in that church so perfectly it'll take the head and the body unite it'll make the head and the body unite to, together see see that's the body he is the head and the body now we find that he promised in the last days that that would be done and he's saying that somebody with the Holy Ghost is going to step out and begin to add these virtues and they're going to hit that sixth one and die. Then they're going to have faith to make this last great step up on that seventh step. There they will meet charity. It's got to be done. Why? Because Christ must live in this church so perfectly that it'll be like husband and wife, the same self person. That is the message, praise God. Hallelujah. Now who's going to do it? Who's going to dedicate themselves to that? Praise God. You see where we are? It must be done. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now you know what I'm preaching about. Amen. People sitting here looking at me and wondering what am I talking about? Amen. You may be seated. Do you understand when you get to that seventh step with all them virtues flowing through you, you can catch the headstone? Yes, sir. Page 17, the Feast of Trump is speaking about the pyramid and the bride and Enoch. Then he comes on down. I, I skip a lot to save time. And uh, he said, go into the prophet's chamber and watch them seven steps. Or oh, where did uh, the guard uh, meet the challenge to uh, bring the comer into the presence of the king at the top of the steps. Uh, where did Malachi for the guard meet you in the seventh age of brotherly kindness to reveal the mysteries to you? 
and to bring you like Esther to the king. Hallelujah, praise God. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going in by faith. I got people I got to save out there. There's those in the bride that don't know. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going to put on the gowns that Mordecai told me to, to, to put on. I'm going to dress the way Mordecai told me to do it. That it would be find favor with the king. I'm going to do what Malachi foretold me to do. Knowing is going to find favor with Jesus Christ. Therefore, I'm going on that seventh step. Hallelujah. You ready to go on that seventh step? Oh, praise God. That's where the king is at. At the top of the step. You may be seated. Was in the seventh step. There shows that we have got to come again with that same spirit that was on John. He introduced the Messiah. He was greater than all the prophets. He introduced him. And we got to come to a place again to something that's going to introduce the Messiah. And how the Messiah, the people that's believing in him, know it. Unless, how can they know it? Unless they are constantly in the word to know what he is. Constantly in that word. Daniel said, the wise shall know, but the foolish, uh, the unwise wouldn't know. They shall know their God. And now he said, it appear in the last days, uh, it, it says, is to bring the people back to the word. So that the bride will know her husband, know her mate, the revealed word. Here's your mate. The revealed word. All the things he told you what not to do with music and all these things here that's the reveal word and when you accept it you accept in the reveal word when you constantly go against it you're rejecting it and taking the mark of the beast don't even know it you young people praise God oh, hallelujah praise God yes sir the reveal word you may be amen that's why this has, has to happen. It wasn't in the reformers. It wasn't in Luther, Wesleyan, and Pentecostals and them. The scripture says it wasn't. But it will come. This is his promise for this age. Oh, we're living in an age that his coming will be in. She must be identified in him. Yes, yes, sir. For the two are one and he is the word. Not the denomination, the word. We ought to be the children of the light. And the light is the word which is made light for this age. How do we know light except it come from the word? All right, the word made flesh is the light of the age when you see it, the Bible said. Oh, praise God. Amen. So it brings the comma, introduce the Messiah. Amen. And uh, not only in mechanics, but also in the dynamics of it, of fire, baptism, charity, and Christ bride has to be identified with him for the two of one and he is the word the word made flesh amen and so un so and to godliness brotherly kindness on the seventh step to meet the presence of the king and to bring and to brotherly kindness charity did you get it so regardless of what shall come though if the whole church walks out the message is denominated, so-called denominated, whatever they want to call it, because you cannot denominate it. Uh, cursed, uh, reviled, no fellowship. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. If I have no place to go and it seems like a, God won't move in my uh, 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 daily problems and so forth. What is that to thee? What has that got to do with the spiritual part? If I don't sell my house, if I sell my house, if I don't get the job, what has that got to do with the spiritual part? What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Pray. Amen. Praise God. Stop measuring God by whether he will sell the house or don't sell the house or give you a job. You don't measure God like that. You measure God by the word of God. God said so. God said so. Stop bringing yourself down, hallelujah, into some dungeon. Praise God. Stay on the mountaintop. Hallelujah, praise God. Yes, sir. They all walk away from you. Keep moving on. Keep pressing on. Amen. What is that that they follow thou me to the adoption, to the resurrection? 
John did tarry till he come. He met him on the Isle of Patmos. But they didn't understand that, praise God. And then he died of old age. What is that today follow thou me? You may be seated. What shall this man do? Don't you worry about what this man is doing here. Praise God. Amen. You do what you're supposed to do, praise God. Keep pressing on, praise God. Don't let little devils stop you. Come on, be burly, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Regardless of what they say about you, whether they put you out of the message, no fellowship, and of some have compassion. That's the word. The sun shines on the evil and on the good. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. You can't go to some mean person that did something to you and start raining and try to take the rain off of them. Did you catch what I said? The sun is shining gloriously and here comes your enemy that spoke against you down the block. You can't take the sun off of him. The sun shines for the evil and the good. We get mad at God and tell God to curse him. Don't give him no sunshine. Don't give him no rain. What is that to do? Follow thou me, praise God. Amen. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, praise God. That's the word. Hallelujah. Now that seven step is brotherly kindness. You may be seated. Is a manifestation of your father's kindness to the people. You come off that cross after you die out with that sixth virtue. To be like Jesus, praise God. And you step off of there, you pick it up on your back, and you become a cross back. And you manifest brotherly kindness with all the mysteries, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, hallelujah. And you get all mixed up, and some have compassion. Jude 20 through 23. Seven final commands, sevenfold duty of the bride. But ye, beloved, number one, building up yourselves in your most holy seven thunder faith. Number two, praying in the Holy Ghost. Three, keep yourself in the love of God. Number four, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. Number five, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Number six, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. That's why I come riding through there and get them doggies. Praise God, they're spotted by the flesh. Come drive it in there, pull them out of there. Amen. Yes, sir. Because I hate the garment that's spotted with the flesh. And Jude here is saying, have compassion on some. Make a difference between those who are weak and ignorant. And the natural brute beast from Jude 8 through 19. Make a difference there, see. And see, discern those who are proud and arrogant of heart. And unwilling to obey truth. So discern what's going on in your church there. Relation 22, 17, you must do it. Save those who don't have a real revelation. Number two, those who uh, waver and doubt. And, and doubt their doubts. Amen. Save them. They keep doing the same thing over and over. See, you can get into a straight sometimes over these people. Yeah, they can drive you crazy. They drove Brother Brown crazy. Ricky, Rick Hedders and so forth. See these seven mountains here and see this... Uh, Fletcher over here, be like a bum. Amen. So, praise God. You don't know what to do with these people sometimes. And I got that way in 1974. Then God thunders out in love five words. And of some have compassion. Amen. Preach the word and I will deal with my people by my spirit. Amen. So I just preach the word. Let the Holy Spirit, if he wants to do anything with him, amen. But they ain't going to stop me from preaching. Amen. They, they're not strong enough. Yes, sir. Amen. Preach the word. I'll deal with them. The bride's mission. Revelation 22, 17. The spirit and the bride say, come. Save those who are willing with fear. Pull them out of the fire. Hate even the garment spotted by the flesh. The object of compassion is those who doubt. Uh, thus Jude exhorts the bride today in brotherly kinds on the seventh step. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for God's mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get on that seven steps so love can come down. 
And 1 Peter 4, 8, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Therefore, uh, 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 and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and be adopted and go after the lost in love. Amen. Whoever's a thirst, whosoever will, let him come. Oh, praise God. Respond to both the intellectual unbelief, no faith, and moral doubts. Number two, opposing their own selves up one day, down the next day. Save those people in love. Amen. Give us a little key. Uh, I love him. Amen. Oh, praise God. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm. Many have been affected and deceived by false teachings and false spirits and false interpretations. The end in view is not expulsion and condemnation of the doubters, see, but their uh, restoration to fellowship. There's quite a few in here that was under some false prophet. Amen. And they came here and we try to restore them. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. And the attitude is one of grace, mercy towards the sinner with abhorrence of his sin, but love for his soul. I remember one sister L, 1974 in May, she was ironing, and then it thundered in her house. And uh, her husband was in one room there, and then the Lord spoke and shook the whole house. And that's what uh, I, uh, I Forgive You does in the spirit world he told her while she was earning it shakes in the spirit world so may God thunder out to you tonight forgiveness oh you, you sisters can go with all you know who you can't shake who you can't shake the hand you know who made you mad you feel funny so does God how you gonna get on that seven step You love him? Or can you love him and you never seen him? You don't love your brother and your sister? Oh, praise God. Let's let God's love do it for us. God's grace to you by the word. Let, let's, let's you see your mistakes so you can repent and put them away and then you give the same grace to your brother or sister. Malachi 4 said, I read it, be, now faith is based on forgiveness. I mean, third pull faith to take you to the rapture. He that is in you, volume 6, number 12, page 12. Uh, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. It's on condition. West Palm Beach, Florida, 1953. Rapture and faith will only be revealed to those who forgive their brothers teaching on Moses if we have one ought among us we stand in damnation of hell's fire church this is serious tonight very serious that's why I'm here I'm totally exhausted Lord he didn't tell me until June 1st that I had to uh, come here a Friday night you see and he told me May 11th I had to preach on temperance I wasn't trying to preach these messages he didn't tell me until May 11th by temperance. Then I knew uh, patience. But I couldn't figure out godliness. I said, well, it seemed like I preached the rest of them, but there's no time. He had already told me that Brother, Brother Blade and I had to rotate until the 16th. You know why the 16th from the 28th? That's 50 days. <laughs> that, that's when the, the Jubilee is blowing right now. And that was the whole purpose to make you go free. That's right. That's what it was for. And why did it start on uh, April 7th? Huh? That was virtue. And that was April 7th to Ju June 16th. That's 71 days. Amen, Brother Tony? So when I preached on faith 1974, September 8th through November 17th, that was 71 days. But that was faith. But this time then came Jesus. That's virtue knowledge temperance patience godliness brotherly kindness tonight oh i wonder if the lights are coming on praise god oh my so i hope somebody goes free with the jubilee and brother robledo didn't know what i was doing he came right in and preached the trumpet of a jubilee 
so you can go free hallelujah so teaching on Moses if we have one order among us we stand in damnation of hell's fire perfect faith now faith is based on forgiveness so I, so I say tonight and to God in his brotherly kindness that you might anoint your seven thunders with love and let charity cover a multitude of sins the Christian attitude is one of mercy toward the sinner together with abhorrence of, of his sin and pull him out of the fire hate even the garment spotted by the flesh blemishes and spots so it's adoption time friends seven step is brotherly kindness and love descends on the seventh step to take out all the evil oh church what shall this man do what is that to thee follow thou me thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself take a man to prayer before God before he begin to talk about him take him to prayer you might see he's all twisted up in his nature that he needs help he's got an evil spirit upon him but many don't have the patience or the love to even do that they don't care all they know is that he, he hurt me or she did this to me or whatever so. well praise God mm. glory to God do you feel his presence I wonder if you your brothers could uh, go to each other and say I love you brother forgive me for anything and you sisters could do the same right, right right where you are if there's someone in here that you know you ain't right with God's testing you tonight are you making right amen yes sir that's wonderful go to the unlovely not just your own kind Isn't that wonderful? Watch. The Lord loves this. Oh, breaking stiff spirits and so forth. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory. Friends, we're going to need one another because this press is moving in. Hallelujah. And something is moving in the message right now. Right this very moment. The enemy is coming against the message. I'm waiting for some more reports on it. The message may hit the front pages. So it's going to happen real quick and we realize that everyone is guilty and we will all need help from one another amen and the best way to do is to pray and when you stand praying if you have an order against your brother drop it amen and God will forgive you too yes and to brotherly kindness charity Oh, isn't it wonderful tonight Hallelujah. to stand under the presence of God, dropping all arts, mothers and daughters and fathers and sons and oh, hallelujah. Go back home and tell your mother, I love you, mommy. I love you, poppy. Praise God. I love you, my brother. Praise God. Brother Bram said, Jeffersonville, 1957, just a love spirit will sweep over the audience. And just every person in there, all that's wrong will be taken out. It'll be just such a presence of the Holy Spirit. We'll just be standing like we are now, preaching like this, or just talking. And just the love will just settle over the building. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Yes, sir. My, my. Do you love Jesus? Fall in love with Jesus. Yes, sir. My, my, my. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Glory. What is tonight? And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Give us a key for love lifted me. Amen. From the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe. Am I, oh Lord, lifted me, love lifted me, and nothing else could help. Last verse. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. Savior wants to be be saved today. Oh, love lifted me. Glory, love lifted me. And nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Glory. It me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Keep playing softly. Every head bow. God, Lord, you ordained Wednesday and Friday night, and I didn't know, and tired and weary as I am, I had to come in here and place godliness and brotherly kindness in here. And this is the first time that I separated brotherly kindness from charity. So, Father, it's been done. And oh God, the anointing that was in here tonight, the people in prayer, Lord, may it remain with them. Amen. Oh God, may your spirit be upon them now. 
Lord God, may you pour out the Holy Spirit now, Lord. Those that are seeking the Holy Ghost, looking for healing, whatever it is, Lord, may love settle down over the building now. Oh, such a love that we've never known before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And may the Holy Spirit break out here from this night on. May we walk in here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. Oh, God, may the revival be on. Hallelujah. Right on down to Macon, Lord, and sweep out across the world. It happened before. It will happen again. Bless the people from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, wherever they come from to be here tonight. Lord God, give them a special portion. Hallelujah. Oh, God, and strengthen my body. And somebody in here need a revelation. Praise God. I pray, Lord, you sweep over them tonight to give them that revelation, Father, of brotherly kindness, dropping the arts, and loving one another. Almighty God, I commit them into thy hands. Praise God. May the healings break out. May the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, may it sweep out. And wherever the tape is played, amen, in their living rooms or wherever, may the balls of fire come in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Be with them, Father. Brother Marcel from Virginia, wherever they come from. Lord, may they pray for me. I'm weary and tired, but I feel that I came to the end June 7th, Lord. And I'll wait your orders to follow what I shall do. So I commit it into thy hands tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and ask the blessing. Amen and amen. Oh, love lifted me. Yes, his love lifted me. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes are wrath the store. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. We're singing glory, glory, hallelujah, oh glory. He has sounded for the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. We're singing glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory. We're singing glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. And in the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. And he died to make men holy. Let us die to make men free while God is marching on. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. We're singing glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth, oh, one more time. 